September 2022. The classic re-release of World of Warcraft's Wrath of the Lich King expansion is right around the corner. And leading up to the release, the developers at Blizzard Entertainment applied a preparatory patch, or pre-patch, to the current version of the game, which included several of the major changes a part of the Wrath of the Lich King expansion, without allowing any access to the new leveling or endgame content associated with it. These changes ranged from changes to the combat system, new skill trees, adjustments to class balance, and most importantly, the inclusion of the new Death Knight class. Unlike most classes, which require players to begin at level 1, the Death Knight was designed to fall under the category of a hero class, meaning that it could start all the way at level 55 instead, allowing them to skip a large portion of the game's leveling-based content. So, to prevent the abuse of this advantage, during the original 2008 release of Wrath of the Lich King, Blizzard put in place two important restrictions in regards to creating a Death Knight. First, players were not allowed to create more than one Death Knight per server, and second, players were not allowed to create a Death Knight unless they already had a character on that server of a different class that was level 55 or higher. However, in the 2022 Classic re-release, Blizzard made the controversial decision to remove this second restriction for every account's first Death Knight. The reasoning behind this change was to attract newer players to the game, as well as older fans of the Death Knight class that had not yet interacted with the other classic versions of the game, by letting them skip the 1-55 to leveling experience and allowing them quicker access to newer and more relevant content. So as a result, the decision to remove this restriction opened the doors for millions of players, regardless of their prior experience with WoW Classic, to create one of these powerful Death Knight characters as soon as the pre-patch was released. And as soon as it did, the servers began to be absolutely flooded with them as players began to level their Death Knights from 55 to 70, with 70 being the current level cap at the time, in order to prepare their characters for the official release of the expansion, where new content in the form of new zones, dungeons, raids, and PvP events would be introduced, and where the level cap would then be raised to 80. But amidst this vast influx of Death Knights during the pre-patch, a meme was born. A clamped theme meme that would completely bamboozle not just the Death Knights, but the WoW Classic community as a whole. On September 24th, 2022, only two days before the official launch of Wrath Classic, a post was made on the Classic WoW subreddit titled, Why You Need To Be Clam Weaving. In the post, a player by the name of Mori shares the following story. Me and some guildmates were hanging out in Discord, chatting while five of them were queuing Warsong Gulch with the new honor buffs. Tenok, our main blood tank, was streaming. I wasn't paying very close attention, but my guildmate Z was. Tenok was in the middle of a fight. He didn't have a health potion on his action bars, so he opened his inventory to click one. He missed it. Instead, he clicked a Jaggle Clam. Now, the interesting thing was that he clicked it right after using Death Strike, and something odd happened. He spammed Death Coil, and it went off immediately. Apparently, Tenok believed that this interaction had somehow managed to reset his global cooldown, also known as the GCD. For those unaware, the GCD is the in-game timer, usually lasting about one to one and a half seconds depending on your class, that occurs after using an ability to space out ability casts and to prevent players from using abilities too quickly. Because Tenok's GCD had supposedly been reset, he was able to cast two spells immediately back to back, allowing him to deal damage much faster than what was normally possible. Mori, unconvinced by Tenok's claim, took it upon herself to test this interaction with the help of another Death Knight by the name of Ibanue, or, as he's known more commonly, Yansa. They started by slaying the various marsh treasure mobs in Zanger Marsh, as they have a rather high rate of dropping jaggle clams, and began testing by having Yansa open the clams mid-combat. The first few tests were largely unsuccessful, but they eventually made a breakthrough once Tenok left the Warsong Gulch group to help. At first, he mimicked Yansa's usage of the clams to no avail, but he eventually made one minor adjustment. He switched his presence. Death Knights have three different presences, or stances, those being Frost, Blood, and Unholy, each providing a different set of passive bonuses depending on which one is currently active. Frost Presence gives additional stamina, increasing the player's health, additional armor, which lowers the amount of physical damage taken from enemies, gives an additional reduction to all damage taken, and increases the threat generated from abilities, meaning that non-player enemies will be more likely to attack them as they deal damage. Blood Presence is a bit simpler. It just increases the Death Knight's damage and self-healing. Unholy Presence, however, provides the Death Knight with increased attack speed and movement speed, but most importantly, it reduces the time of the global cooldown by half a second. While Blood Presence usually ends up dealing more damage in longer fights, like in Dungeon or Raid boss encounters, Unholy Presence sees a lot more usage in PvP encounters, as it's usually a good idea for players to build their characters around dealing large chunks of damage in quick bursts, rather than spreading their damage over a long period of time. So, since he was using Unholy Presence when he first experienced the bug in a PvP battleground, Tenok switched back to Unholy, tried another clam, and this time, the bug worked. However, when Yansa switched to Unholy and tried the same thing, it failed. So, clearly, there had to be something else going on in tandem with the use of Unholy Presence. And eventually, after searching through all of the differences between their two characters, the group 
group managed to narrow it down to one specific talent, Improved Unholy Presence. Improved Unholy Presence is a bit of a strange case, since the classic versions of World of Warcraft were originally released several years ago, 2008 in the case of Wrath of the Lich King, longtime fans of the game have had more than enough time to theorize and calculate the best possible ways to allocate your skill points depending on what type of content you engage with. And while yes, some people still choose to deviate from these talent presets or builds from time to time, a very large portion of the player base will almost always stick to these common builds without question, because people are less likely to pick a talent with a more niche use when they know that other talents have been mathematically proven to be more effective. In the case of Improved Unholy Presence, though, most players rarely ever used it, at least on the PvE side of things, but generally speaking, it was one that the vast majority of players overlooked. So, Yensa went and changed his talents to now include Improved Unholy Presence, then tried another clam, and, wouldn't you know, his global cooldown reset. They had figured out the bug, and as a result, the method of combat known as clam weaving had been created. They weren't entirely sure why clam weaving worked, but the hypothesis they devised relied on the following three pieces of information. First, the Unholy Presence ability directly alters the global cooldown. Second, while the Improved Unholy Presence talent does not affect the global cooldown, it does affect the properties of the Unholy Presence ability, which does. And third, in addition to the global cooldown surrounding abilities, there exists an additional global cooldown triggered specifically for usable items. So, their running theory was that the bug may have been caused by an unintended interaction between the talent and the ability, and how it interacted with the two separate global cooldowns. After this, the group did a bit more testing with other items such as potions, scrolls, and other consumables, but the only types of items that seemed to work were container items like lockboxes and of course the clams. Mori then concluded her post by encouraging other players to try their hand at clam weaving in order to gain a massive boost to their damage output, but more importantly to help them figure out more ways of optimizing the technique. To facilitate their assistance, she even provided a helpful clam weaving macro, which is an in-game command that could be bound to a single button in order to simplify the act of casting an ability and opening a clam at the same time, and recommended that players use the speedy auto loot add-on, which drastically speeds up the game's auto loot feature, which would clear the loot frame that comes from opening a container much faster, which would then in turn allow players to clam weave much more frequently. Not long after, the post was picked up by Blight Club, a community-driven Discord server used by WoW players to connect and discuss in-game strategies related to the Death Knight class, and from there it exploded in popularity. Soon enough, everyone, from your everyday player to some of the most popular streamers on Twitch, were all talking about clam weaving. Dude, there's a bug right now that if you open up a, you know those jaggle clams? If you, if you open up a clam while you're on global cooldown with unholy presence, it resets your global cooldown. <laughs> so, Death Knights right now can technically just machine gun, like... <laughs> Tons of Death Knights began spending their gold to switch their talents in order to include Improved Unholy Presence, and players from all over, regardless of their class, began flocking to Zenger Marsh to collect as many clams as possible. Of course, the Death Knights were farming them to use them, but everyone else saw it as the perfect opportunity for profit, as they began selling these clams to other players on the in-game auction house for absurd amounts of gold. But as the chaos ensued, people began to doubt the legitimacy of clam weaving. Sure, there had been similar bugs or weird spell interactions like this before, druids have definitely had their fair share of stuff like this, so it wasn't that the idea of clam weaving was completely unbelievable, but the fact was that no one had been able to replicate what Mori had described. In essence, if clam weaving was in fact real, she was going to need more evidence. Hey y'all, this is Ayla Mao, otherwise known as Mori or Moriko on Sulfurous Horde. Uh, I'm the read leader for All Cats Are Beautiful. The next day, Mori posted a YouTube video titled Clam Weaving Proof footage inside, which contained a short clip of Tenok performing the glitch on a training dummy, which he then slowed down to show that his global cooldown had in fact been reset upon opening a clam. Here was the proof, exactly as advertised. Well, not exactly. If one were to continue watching the video, immediately following the footage of Tenok was this clip. Y me llama el cocinero. Risita, ¿qué? Ve por la paellera. Venga, que las dos de la tarde ya están aquí. Mira el bañador. Pues la chancla. Todo despeinado porque no me dio tiempo de nada ponerme la chancla y el bañador. Voy a la playa, había subido la marea. Eso. And so, as you can see, clam weaving was never real to begin with. Eso. Había subido la marea y con su 
a ella. But as the clam weaving craze came to its conclusion, despite being lied to, players began to look at clam weaving with a surprising fondness. Of course, people had been making memes throughout the occurrence, but even after Mori had come clean about it, people continued to make jokes about clam weaving, pretending as if it were a real thing. And if you go into the Blight Club Discord server today, you'll find that not only are there custom clam weaving emojis, but Mori and Tenok were also both given unique clam commander roles to identify them as the co-creators of the joke. And later that month, Mori and Tenok both appeared on the podcast known is Countdown to Classic, where they were interviewed by host Joshua Corbett, and where they shared details about both the origin of the meme and some of their reactions to its success. But it wasn't just the community that recognized their efforts. A few months later, in a 2023 April Fool's post, Blizzard even referenced the meme, joking that they intended to introduce a new in-game profession called weaving, which, in addition to making fun of actual player-devised gameplay techniques, like melee weaving and bear weaving, they made a direct reference to clam weaving, exposing the joke to a much wider audience. I think it was very cool. I did not expect anything to come from this. So the morning after, right, I woke up after I posted it. I felt like a kid waking up on Christmas morning and with my inbox flooded and being like, oh my God, people are taking this seriously. Light Club's freaking out. And that was a lot of fun. So to see Lizard engage with that and to like go along with the joke was super cool. But it wasn't until a few months later that clam weaving would truly be cemented into WoW history. At the 2023 BlizzCon, a gaming convention held by Blizzard in Anaheim, California, to celebrate their games and to showcase the upcoming content, Blizzard announced a whole bunch of their future plans. Not only did they announce the next three expansions for the modern version of the game, but also the classic re-release of the Cataclysm expansion, as well as Season of Discovery, a modified and seasonal version of original World of Warcraft filled with new abilities, quests, and other secrets. In addition to these new features, Season of Discovery, or SOD for short, also included a new level-based phase schedule. Phases meaning new waves of content in which the first is released usually a few months after launch, and subsequent phases are spaced out in a similar manner after that. While in original WoW, phases primarily included content developed for level 60 characters, which is the max level in this version, in Sod, the first phase would limit players to level 25, with the next phase raising the level cap to 40, then 50, and then finally 60. While this system served to give players more time to explore and optimize new abilities, it also put more of an emphasis on the game's lower level dungeons, a form of PvE content content in which five players venture into an instance locale with the goal of defeating a set number of bosses in order to obtain large amounts of experience points as well as valuable upgrades to their weapons and armor. Additionally, Blizzard also made the choice to select the dungeon for each phase and upgrade it into a raid, raising the difficulty of the dungeon's encounters by adding new bosses, strengthening old bosses, and requiring around 10 to 20 players instead of the typical five. But most importantly, the shift from dungeon to raid also gave Blizzard the opportunity to introduce powerful new items into the game that would drop from these more challenging fights, and one of these special items, designed to fit the ocean theme of the Phase 1 raid of Black Fathom Deeps, and dropped by the giant turtle Gamura, is none other than the Clam Weave Tunic, a cloth chess piece with a tooltip reading, you're not entirely certain, but you're pretty sure that clam weaving isn't a real thing. Oh, I, I freaked the f*** out. I was like, no f way because i was watching blizzcon and then i started getting dms from people with a picture that somebody had taken from the saw demo they had the demo live before they went into the full in-depth presentation where they included the claim weave tunic as part of the slide deck and i was just like holy shit, there's no there's no way that this random thought that my gremlin brain had made it into a blizzard game you know what i mean like it's incredibly cool and incredibly humbling to like have something that you created be recognized like that i was over the moon yeah no i was i was ecstatic it's incredibly cool and incredibly humbling to be included in you know the history of world of warcraft like that i don't know it, it doesn't feel real at times and that pretty much brings us to where we are today. But before I wrap things up, I just want to give a huge shout out to Mori, the Clam Queen herself, for making the initial post and for helping me out as I was writing this video. 100% it would not have been possible without her, and I just want to give huge props to her and Tenok for putting this whole thing together, and also to Tenok for his contributions to the joke, offering his knowledge of the Death Knight class while Mori was crafting the original post, and for helping to perpetuate it in Blight Club with all his fun little shenanigans after they picked it up. I also want to thank Josh Corbett for his wonderful interview on the Countdown to Classic podcast. It was actually Mori who directed me to it, but he asked some really great questions 
questions that definitely helped a ton as I was scripting this video. And if you're interested in hearing more about the story directly from Morian Tenok about some of the more finer details surrounding the joke, then I definitely recommend checking that out, and I'll have it linked in the description. And last of all, I want to thank all of you wonderful WoW players who helped turn this random Reddit post into one of the best memes I've seen in a long time. I had a ton of fun making this video, and I may or may not have just spent way too much time laughing at all the hilarious memes as I was researching and going through all the Blight Club chat logs and the Reddit posts. But again, thank you for being such a fun community. But that's pretty much all I have. So, thanks.